are going to be so glad too that John Path Nathan made it. And have you seen some documentaries lately on uh, GPS is not being all that we hoped they would be? I, w should we blame the GPS? Well, I, I guess. <laughs> it wasn't your navigator, your wife Donna? I should have trusted the God power source instead of the GPS, because <gasps> GPS stands for God power source. All right. Yeah, I should have trusted that source instead of the, the electronics. John, you're here from St. Catharines. Yes, I am. Not a long journey. Thank you for making it today. Thanks, Myra. But you have had a long journey. You were actually born in Sri Lanka. That's right. Uh, you are a Tamil Canadian. But you didn't stay in Sri Lanka. No. Uh, I was just finding out where in Europe your family decided to land. We actually ended up in Germany, and uh, where I pretty much spent my rest of my childhood there until I came 12, and then we decided to move to Toronto. Right, to Toronto. Yeah. Toronto, Ontario. Now, I am holding <clears throat> photographs of you. They're all mug shots. And uh, the dates are, are pretty consecutive here. Uh, 1996 for the first mug shot. Um, 96, 97, uh, 2001, and the last one, whoops, I got them upside down. That's an interesting expression. Also, 2001, uh, this charge assaulting a peace officer. How did you get into this mess? Well, I think there is a prodigal in every one of us. I just, I guess it's just we're trying to find a way back home. And uh, I was one of the prodigal. And um, I'm amazed, um, that there's a love that actually refuses to give up on humanity. And uh, the, a love that actually stopped giving up on humanity. And uh, I'm a product of that love. And um, I just want to share a little bit of my testimony. I was actually was born in uh, Sri Lanka. And at the age of 10 months, um, my dad passed away. And uh, in the meantime, there was a civil war broke down in Sri Lanka. And as a result of that, my mom picked me and my brother and we decided to move to uh, Europe. And that's where I spent the rest of my life, uh, the rest of my childhood. So you're talking about a single mom with two boys. Exactly. And, and, we, and a Hindu family. We come from a very strong Hindu background. And um, especially the death of my father really had a great impact on my life. Um, begin to search uh, the male figure and the father acceptance in, in, as a child. Uh, although my, f my uncles and uh, family members would just come in and try to fill that gap, um, they would leave after a while and it always uh, left me abandoned. And uh, when I came in 1992, uh, when we decided to move to Canada, and um, my first day in experience in school, I was actually chased by two individuals um, because they made a racial comments towards me. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I didn't allow that, so I stood up against that. And right after school, uh, I was chased. And um, that kind of shook me a little bit. Uh, I, was, I began to fear a little bit because it's a new country. I didn't speak the language well. I had no friends. And uh, so I approached my uncles and, and, my, and the school board. And, and I explained to them what actually had happened to me. And they kind of brushed it off. Uh, they didn't really make it a big deal out of it. And I think from that day on, I kind of made a choice in my life that I don't need to defend myself. And, um, and that began uh, a lifestyle. Uh, when I came to high school, um, especially the grown-ups, the teenagers, um, and the older kids kind of were drawn to me, especially I had an attitude, um, I wanted to defend, I wanted to stand up for my right, and, and the toughness uh, kind of brought me into their circle. And, um, Was it real toughness, or it, is it just bravado? I think John. it's a bravado. I think it's just a, a pretense mm -hmm. that, you know, like, and I think that's, uh, the struggle we really see in teenagers, uh, they get to our age, they, they feel uh, that they're not protected, and, and then they try to put a front uh, to show to the world, look, I'm a tough kid. And in the process, they're trying to convince themselves convince that they're themselves, not exactly. afraid, they're not defenseless. I was asking you, you know, having seen West Side Story so fresh last week in Stratford, the Jets and the Sharks, the two street <laughs> gangs, of course, a modern day Ju Romeo and Juliet tale. Uh, that line stood out. I don't know how many times I've seen the movie when the, the leader of the Jets said, without a gang, 
you're an orphan. And, and I asked you about that uh, as you were quickly getting some makeup on. Uh, you identify with that. That was part of the draw. No dad wanting to be protected, wanting to belong. I mean, it's our first felt need is belonging. Mm. This is part of what enticed you to a, what became a very violent lifestyle. Absolutely. And, and you hit it home, uh, the acceptance part, it's, 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 it's major in, in a child's life, especially in a boy's life. And because he's, he's trying to find his identification, his, 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 you know, his role as, as a boy. And because especially when you go from, uh, from a child to a teenage life, and that's when you're really trying to figure out, okay, you know what, who am I? And um, as I said, when I, when I start going out and when the older kids kind of trying to brought me into it, I found my acceptance in them. Um, I felt really worthy. Um, and as a result, uh, they started um, using me. Uh, mm -hmm. They started giving me drugs, uh, alcohol, and uh, that led me into a lifestyle of, of crimes. Um, start carrying guns, um, knives to school. Is Never. That, that's not possession of property over five thousand uh, dollars. That's no, that's not it. Something else. Uh, yeah. Um, but as far as, um, it's never, uh, we never had the intention of going out and killing somebody or, uh, or wanting to hurt someone. It's just, I always had this sense that, you know what, if I show them these things, like if I show them, look, I'm a tough kid, if I show them a gun, if I show them a knife, that they will leave me alone and they will respect me. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1998, um, we ended up going to a school and um, it came on a Sunday newspaper. We actually went into school. We had to fight with a couple of kids and a couple of me and my friends who we went to school and we actually took a gun and we opened fire in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that, um, I got arrested and I was put into prison. And it was during that time, my mom, uh, as I said, she was a very devoted Hindu. Uh, she actually um, was going through it issues, especially seeing me going through, um, this, you know, this lifestyle, and uh, she didn't know what to do with me. And at the time, a, li a friend of her actually asked her to come and uh, to a church service. Uh huh. And what did I say? Yeah. If a friend invites you, go for it. <laughs> and she went to a church. And she just had a uh, urge to go, and and when she went there, um, the preacher taught about Jesus, and something inside of her just, you know start embracing it and and right there she gave her life to Jesus, went home, took her all her idols that she worshipped, threw it away and became a follower of Christ. That day? That day. Just like that? Just like that. And what happened was uh, during that time I was arrested so I called my mom from prison and I asked her, you know, get me out on bail. And when I started asking her to get me on bail, she started talking about Jesus. And she said, you know, that she found Jesus and, uh, and she insisted me to read the Bible. At first, I became very angry. Uh, I said, did you change religion? And, and, but the thing is, her tone, there was something different about her. She had some, she, there, there was life. The more she spoke about Jesus, there was life. Yeah. And, and she said, no, but I want you to read the Bible. She wants you to read the Bible. And um, so I said, you know what, Mom, if someone gives me out a Bible, I will definitely read it. And um, it was in June 1998, um, I heard that during that week there was someone handing out free Bibles. And uh, so I just went up and uh, someone from Gideon's was handing out a little Gideon's Bible. And um, so I asked him for one. And for the first time, Maurice, I took, it, I took that Bible into my prison cell. Uh, I was 18 years old. And I opened the, the pages of life for the first time. And something profound happened to me. I cannot explain. The Bible began to read me. It began to expose me. It began to show me uh, my failures. It began to show me that there was a love that was available. There was the, and it began to show me that there was a savior that was waiting for me to, to receive him. And, and, it, and, I, and the more I read it, the more it, I had a sense of peace. I came out from prison. My mom asked me to come to church. I didn't want to go to church. I knew the church wouldn't accept me. Um, I had long hair, nose ring. Um, I thought, you know, I thought I always had this impression that church is a place where you go and you're perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's all those my, holy people there. Uh, there right? you go. My impression of church was that. But because she insisted, she asked. Um, I went, and uh, right there, um, 
that pastor preached for a, an hour and right after service he asked me to come to the front for prayer. So I said, you know what, you know, I probably need some prayer. I mean, especially, you know, being where I've been to, been at. So, so he prayed and while he was praying, uh, something overwhelmed me and it just, and a power of God just hit, came on me and then next second I was on the floor.